this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe process for a new partner to be admitted to a partnership. So this is a bit of a loaded question here because there's a few different ways that a new partner can be admitted to a, a partnership and uh, the, you know, the transactions that will be involved will be a bit different depending on, uh, on those processes. So one way uh, is that we can have a partnership, say we've got A and B as the partners, A and B, and they own 50-50. We could have one partner, say B, sell a portion of their partnership, say 20%, to C. And if that happened, then what's happening is, is, and usually you'd have to get approval from A, B would have to get approval from A to sell a portion of the pro of the pro partnership uh, to C. But once done so, it's really a transaction between not the partnership and the new partner, but between B and C. So they're selling part of the partnership between B and C. The thing that's going to be confusing about this is often the fact that when we see problems related to this, we see that C pays B, and we tend to think that we have to record that cash somehow. But we don't for the partnership because the cash didn't go to the partnership. C paid B, it didn't go to the partnership. So in terms of, of the partnership side of things, what do we need to do? Well, it, it depends on the, on the agreement here. A B may have just said, hey, you're going to purchase a future share of of revenue generation, meaning you're going to get 20% of the revenue and B keeps 30%, which means we don't really have to do anything when on the partnership side when it first starts. We just need to, once allocating net income at the end of the period, start allocating based on a 50-30-20 split rather than a 50-50 split. And that's all, we, that's all we need to do. Now, it is possible as well for B to sell some portion of, of their current capital account and whatever they whatever they end up selling, whatever portion they, they sell as part of the agreement, we would then just transfer from B to C. We would debit B's capital account and credit C's capital account. But there shouldn't be any any other confusion from that because the cash isn't going to the partnership. So it's not like we have this difference between how much cash was received and the capital account balances. The second way it could happen, we would we would have some of those differences. So if we had A and B, the partnership, then bringing on a new partner, C, then now the transaction is between the whole partnership and C. So then that means that the money is gonna go from uh, the, new, the new partner to the partnership, and we will have to record it. It's going into the partnership's um, account now. So we'll have to debit the cash into the partnership, and then we're gonna have to credit C for whatever C goes on the books for. Now, this one this one gets a bit more confusing. This method because uh, we could have we could have cash going up and C being attributed an equal amount of capital in the business. And if that case is the scenario, then we would just debit cash and we would credit C's capital for the amount of cash contributed, and that would be all good. However, it doesn't always happen that way. It could be that C gives more cash to the business than, uh, than the capital account that we distribute to C. Meaning, if we take a look at the value of the business, assets minus liabilities, or the equity in the business, uh, and, then, and plus, the, plus the revenue that we're cash that we're getting, assets minus uh, liabilities, and, and including the cash we get, we're, then, C, uh, if C gives more money than that amount, the net assets in, in the business, then we're going to have to do some allocation of that excess to the other partners, uh, A and B. And the question you might ask, well, why would that happen? Why would C give more money than he's technically receiving, or he or she is technically receiving in the net assets of the business? And the reason is there could be stuff on the business that's, that's not being reflected, meaning there could be something like goodwill within the business. So A and B might have been in this business for a long time. They might have a reputation in the business that's not reflected on the balance sheet, and therefore there's some value in the balance sheet that's not reflected. Uh, in uh, There's some value not reflected on the balance sheet that is apparent in the business and C's willing to pay for that by paying more 
than the net assets in the business. So if that was the case, then we'd have to we'd have to debit cash for whatever was given. We'd have to credit C's capital account for uh, the amount that C's going on the books for, and then A and B would get kind of a bonus. Their capital accounts would be increasing because, in essence, they're selling. You know, they sold kind of part of their partnership for more than it's on the books for. It's kind of the book value of the partnership. They got more money than the book value of the partnership, and there's a gain on the sale. We don't record the gain in net income and then roll it into the capital accounts because it's not really the partnership that it's, we're not talking partnership performance. The partnership didn't earn the revenue. We sold the actual partnership. <laughs> so it's, it's not, it shouldn't go into net income. It's a gain kind of to, it's kind of like a, a bonus or a gain to B, A, and B. Their capital accounts going up, representing that they, they're owed more money from the partnership. They have more value within the partnership. Now it could also be, last scenario, <laughs> that C goes into the partnership and he gives less money than the the book value of the partnership, including the cash that's being contributed. And so if that's the case, and again you might ask, well why would why would A and B accept that? Why would they accept a new partner going into the partnership and the, the new partner pays less money than uh, is, is the net value of the partnership, their portion of the net value of the partnership. Why would, why would A and B do that? Well, it could be that C now is going, maybe C is some kind of all-star, some kind of superstar, big name person, and if they go into the partnership, maybe they're gonna, they have gonna bring some intangible into the, into the business and therefore pull up the business reputation a lot. So that could be one way. It could also be that A and B really need <laughs> some capital investment in the partnership at this point in time because they want to start a new project or something like that or expand in some way and they're look and they're willing to uh, get get the capital that they can from C uh, even though it's less than possibly the net value of, of the business so if that happened then we'd have to debit the cash we would credit C's capital account which which would be you know higher than than the cash because we're, we're gonna give a higher percentage to C than the cash. And then we'd have to reduce the other two A and B's capital accounts because in essence, they kind of sold their, their business at a loss. We don't record it as a loss on the income statement again, same reason, because the partnership didn't really have a loss. The partners kind of had a loss. So we're gonna re lower the, the capital accounts representing the fact that the partnership basically owes them less money due to this transaction, due to the sale of the partnership interests.